Dr. Carolyn Frazier chose the topic, uh, and I'm going to read a little bit of, of her dissertation. Um, the topic of the dissertation uh, actually uh, is uh, entitled, Through Educators' Eyes, a Narrative Inquiry into Teachers Utilizing Transformative Pedagogy as a Practice of Freedom to Build Mutual Understanding and Respect Between Prisoners and University Students. Wow, with a title like that, you wonder if that wasn't the whole dissertation. Uh, actually, titles can be somewhat deceiving because uh, they don't oftentimes capture the passion or the purpose of the dissertation. Uh, Carolyn's dissertation, let me explain a little bit about the Inside Out program. Inside Out program is where students from a particular university take a class let's say in literature or philosophy um, with prisoners from a prison. And so they, the students from St. Joseph's in this case meet with prisoners uh, from a penitentiary in, in the Philadelphia area. I'm not going to get specific about that. Um, but they meet there uh, and they take a class together with uh, professors from St. Joseph's. Uh, Carolyn was one of the people that was involved with the professors from St. Joseph's in presenting that course there. Uh, it's through this changed venue where the two groups from their different perspectives move to a, a different place together through the study of literature, through the study of art, through the study of philosophy. And through those conversations and dialogue what happens is a very different community is created. So it benefits the students at the, at the penitentiary, it also benefits the students from St. Joseph's immensely. Uh, I was privileged to be able to go to the graduation this last year because of Carolyn's work, along with one of my colleagues, Dr. Amy Tarosky, here at St. Joe's, uh, to go to their final graduation and their final presentation of projects. It was very inspiring to see the way that, that young people from St. Joe's were interacting with the prisoners here. There truly was a sense of community, and you could see the growth from both sides into a mutual respect and an understanding that was transcending boundaries that we normally put upon each other. Carolyn's particular focus was going to look at not the prisoners or the students from St. Joseph's, but what effect that this program had upon the teachers in the program, the professors from St. Joseph's. One of the reasons that she chose that is it's very difficult to get IRB, uh, Institutional Review Board, approval to work with prisoners um, because prisoners have been so abused over the years and have been used as guinea pigs in many, many cases. Uh, so it was just not only easier for her to focus on the professors, but also very enriching because no one had done this study before, looking at the effects that this program had on the instructors themselves. Uh, and it was through this lens uh, that she was trying to develop um, the impact of the program for both institutions as well as for the individuals and particularly on the professors. Carolyn won the Rashford Award this last year. Uh, the Rashford Award is given to, to the most distinguished dissertation each year. Now it doesn't have to be given each year if the criteria aren't realized, but it has been given 11 times um, in the history of our program at St. Joe's. That does mean every year. Um, the Rashford Award criteria include the fact that the dissertation should magnify and, and pick up on the strong mission that St. Joseph has as a Jesuit institution. Uh, I don't even like to word, use that word institution because it, it doesn't really capture the, the Jesuit fervor or what it really means to be uh, in that charism. Uh, the Jesuit idea of being in the world, social justice, the idea of transcending boundaries, the idea of equality among individuals and the rights of all is extremely important uh, for us here at St. Joe's. And Carolyn was able to capture that in her dissertation. One of the other criteria is, is that it should be a program that is scholarly and, and contributes generally to the field of knowledge. And this Carolyn also was able to do. Uh, she did extremely thorough research, very careful writing, uh, and was able to express herself uh, very fully in, in her dissertation. Uh, let me uh, share one other aspect of this that I think is very important. Uh, I read the title of her dissertation to you before. Let me repeat that again for you because I think it's, it's worth making the point. 
um, through educators' eyes, a narrative inquiry into teachers utilizing transformative pedagogy as a practice of freedom to build mutual understanding and respect between prisoners and university students. Now, I think if you went into a bookstore or you went online and you saw that title, chances are you'd never want to read that. Um, because it doesn't capture anything. Uh, it does describe what her dissertation is about, but it doesn't make me want to turn a page. And as her dissertation advisor, um, I said to her, Carolyn, um, I'm not sure that I want to read the next sentence after listening to that title or reading that title. But the title captures what it should as being a scholarly work. I want to tell you how she begins, and I'm going to read the beginning of the dissertation because this is the point I think that is important for other students. That is that your dissertation needs to be very engaging, not to be cute or to write a mystery novel or to write a bestseller, but it needs to engage the reader and draw them in dramatically from almost the very first words that you write. So I'm going to read a little bit about how she begins that dissertation and that title that I gave you that isn't necessarily of great interest. She begins by quoting a philosopher that we deal with much in our program, Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Uh, and she begins by the quotation, man is born free and everywhere he is in chains. I develop this a lot in the courses that I teach. We talk a lot about the meaning of that and how that Rousseau was the intellectual and spiritual voice for the French Revolution and continues to reverberate around the world today. Uh, and Carolyn chose to use this at the beginning because her dissertation talks a lot about freeing individuals wherever they are in chains. This is her prelude, as she called it, uh, which was the beginning of the dissertation. Before I get there, I want to say that chapter one of the dissertation is an introduction. Here it is, you lay out what it is that you're going to be doing. Now you can start by saying, my dissertation is about, and boom, 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 boom. That doesn't engage me, and it doesn't bring us into it. In the introduction, you can use much more freedom than you can in chapters two, three, four, five, and if you have a chapter six in the dissertation. So, as Carolyn was writing, she is able to use more freedom in language. She can use first person pronoun uh, rather than and strictly be in a more scholarly approach. So her first chapter flows much more this way. This is how she begins. She begins with a prelude. I can see more clearly that there is always a moment in time and place that begs the inquiries so elegantly posed by Noy, N-O-Y. This is a poet that she's quoting. Where does a journey begin? How does a journey begin? With a question? With its writing? Or as with this one, a smell? Then she goes into the background. I believe my journey has always been waiting for me. It was just a matter of time before I acted upon it. When you come to think of it, I think this journey began long before I tried to write about it. If I were to guess the precise moment, I would have to say that this journey began first in my conscious mind and then through my physical senses. It began with an odor. Imagine this, a smell of pine. Not the pine of Christmas trees, but rather a very powerful disinfectant over sweat and urine. This pungent smell hits you right after you enter through the first steel door. Lingers through the corridors and into the faded steel staircase that leads you to the room where inmates and students have classed together. It stagnates in the air and almost immediately I began to cough. Institutional pine, that's what I call it. Ironically, most of the university students do not comment much about the smell. But I once asked an inmate student what prison smelled like to him. His answer, what does prison smell like? It smells like fear, desperation, loathing, tears, sweat, anger, hate, dirty socks, and niggas. That's what prison smells like. However, most inmates students just say there really isn't anything to smell because whatever it once smelled like, they grew accustomed to it long ago. In contrast, and my own personal feelings aside, even with most overpowering of smells in the discolored environment, that would intimidate the uninitiated, 
where inmates have shaved heads and tattoos sit by side by side with college students in a prison classroom. Whatever else one might think, the prison located centrally in the northeastern part of the United States appears abnormally clean. I cannot speak for where the inmates are housed or shower or for that matter even eat. But from the time you are processed to enter the prison until you reach the room where prisoners and university students have class together, all that is seen are waxed floor tiles, newly painted walls, stairwells without a speck of dirt, and of course, with equally inexplicable regularity, there remains the smell. The other remarkable thing is how quiet the prison is. There is not any of the enraged, persistent banging you see on television shows, probably because prisoners are locked in for most of the day. What noises are heard are not very vivid. They are the crowd noises. Before I really began to listen, they sounded like faint Gregorian chants. Although unaccompanied by singing, the characteristics of the chants are monophonic in texture and rhythm flexible, without even the simplest harmonies, almost like echoes in a tunnel. Today I know they are the voices of people rapping, singing, talking, keys jangling, etc. I have learned to ignore the noise except for those voices that stick out, like those on the walkie-talkies yelling, inside out, coming through, or lockdown, meaning all visitors out, the president's dealing with a situation. It took me a while to put two and two together, but excessive noise in prison means there is a problem. Nonetheless, what I remember most about the first day I assisted in teaching in prison is that I do not remember any noise. Once the steel gate slammed shut and the key turned in the lock behind me, there was simply silence and it remained to be so until the inmate students entered the room and introduced themselves, and with that, my journey began. There is a special reason why this journey is still so fresh in my mind. It was my welcome to the Department of Corrections, DOC, opened in 1986, and now visited weekly by teachers and volunteer students from private, coeducational Northeastern University. I have been participating in helping to teach a prison exchange program, or by its more formal title, the Inside Out Prison Exchange Program, for four years. Managed under the Northeastern Prison System, DOC imposing stone structure confines mostly adult males who have been committed by the courts and certified juveniles who have been remanded to the adult penal system. DOC, a maximum security county prison, which at times has caused me to feel great sadness has also given me the most exhilarating teaching moments I have had in more than seven years of working with students at the community college level. That's how she begins. Then she gets into her research. Her, her dissertation is primarily qualitative, but she traces the effects of prison, recidivism. She goes into the importance of how you can qualify uh, for a dissertation. She gets into the details on writing it and then lays it out in a very scholarly way what she found. Essentially, what she found was the fact that teachers teaching in the program go through a transformation themselves in which they live and breathe the Ignatian ideals. They live and breathe what it was that St. Ignatius wrote about. They live and breathe what it means to be closer and to find an intimacy with Christ, which is precisely what St. Ignatius was trying to find. They live and breathe what it means to be in the world rather than locked away in a monastery if that was your religious life. They live and breathe what it means to be a part of the world and to hopefully transform your little space in the world so that that transformation can grow and become larger. It's because of this dissertation that Carolyn was awarded the Rashford Award. And I'm sorry to say that she's not able to record this herself for you or to be present for you to do this, but circumstances uh, just did not permit it. As you know, our conference was snowed out. Uh, maybe you can't believe that on a beautiful spring day like today, um, but that's what happened. I hope if you get a chance that you could read Carolyn's dissertation, it's in the library, or if anybody wants to contact her directly, uh, she's currently teaching in the Philadelphia area, uh, working with uh, students through, the, uh, through Philadelphia schools uh, and working with literacy projects, various literacy projects. 
I'm not sure that's where she's going to end up. Uh, I see a great future for her uh, and believe that uh, someday she'll be, um, she'll be directing great programs and carrying the Ignatian vision further. Thanks for listening. I know this was a rather lengthy, but the dissertation is worth that. And so I hope you have a great conference online, uh, and I hope that you can take from this and begin to write your own dissertations.